Hi there. I'm Elizabeth Ricks, and this is Thursday Thoughts. It's technically Friday, but last night the, the wind was so bad I could not get in any very good audio uh, on this. So I just figured we'd do for some Friday formulations. <laughs> um, I'm here with Mabel Ricks, and um, our topic for today is how... Hi... Um, how we talk about horses and why that matters. I went on um, a date night with my boyfriend last week and we went to this like social club um, that has saunas and cold plunges in Boulder. And it was really a really cool place. And um, part of killing the time while you're sweltering is um, striking conversations with, with folks. And there was a gal who started talking about her um, experience as a, a trainer of polo horses and she had trained these horses for some very wealthy people there was a lot of name dropping but that's beside the point <laughs> um, anyways it, it was it was really interesting listening to her talk because she she started talking uh, about um, some of the practices that she felt really icky about doing and um that that her employers asked her to in, engage in and there was uh, apparently there's like these big cloning programs which is just feels super icky and she kept she kept saying how um how these horses were just looked at as commodities and vehicles and um and there was there was no interest in developing relationship with the horses and they were all dead in the eyes and wouldn't take um, treats and um, were really just seen as um, as as money uh, they were objectified um, and so I I connected uh, on some levels uh, certainly her experience seemed a lot more dramatic than my experience in dressage land, but there was there were still a lot of parallels, and so I, I chimed in and started a conversation with her, and because I thought, oh well, here's something that we could connect on, and so we got talking a little while, a little bit, and she, I told her that you know my foundation was in dressage, and started explaining what I'm I'm now doing, and that dressage is a part of it, but it's really about. Um, you know, the relationship that I have with, with my horses and the relationship that clients have with their horses is, um, is more about, um, partnership and, and co-creation. And I don't know what I said, but she goes, oh, so, so your, your client's horses get away with a lot. And I was like, no, that, no, it's not like that. <laughs> And so it was really interesting to me because I, on the one hand, we started connecting about something, um, some a, a real problem in the horse world. But then it it made me realize that um, there we are still in quite a bit of a bubble, and there is a huge swath of the equestrian world that still thinks about horses and views horses a certain way, even when there is love for the horse. And um, yeah, two, two things about this that I wanted to expand on is, one, you know, how can we connect with those people still and make meaningful change and, and maybe plant seeds of a different way of being with horses. And then number two is how we talk about horses and, and why that is so important. So I'll start with number two. Um, I actually, the reason I brought Mabel out here is because she's one of these horses that um, has been labeled in the past as naughty and has had naughty behaviors. And I, I don't believe that there are horses that are naughty out there. I don't believe that there are horses that are manipulative and a lot of people sometimes fall in the trap of describing what their horse is doing as uh, as manipulative or with an agenda. So if we can catch ourselves, um, even us heartfelt horse people who already 
you know, have um, the horse horse first mentality in mind. Um, if we can catch ourselves in any moment where we are assigning some sort of judgment on what the horse is doing, you know, based on a, a, an anthropomorphic model, or um, if we can instead choose to empathize with the horse before we say something potentially negative. Um, I, I'm trying to think of an example where I caught myself. Well, here, here's one thing. This, this is kind of an advanced version of this. Um, instead of saying good girl um, or good boy when a horse does something that we like or that we want, why, why don't we say um, thank you? And that was such a great effort. You're amazing. I'm, I'm so impressed by what you did and have that sort of energy. Because, you know, words have power. Words have energy and a vibration. And we can influence a lot of the energy. Uh, we can influence a lot of um, our experience with horses by always choosing words that align with what we're trying to cultivate and um, labeling a horse as good or bad um, or labeling a horse as good implies that um, they are they are what they do instead of um, assuming that they are always good always perfect and their their efforts um, towards things are what we're we're really trying to trying to highlight like um, and beyond that you know just the basics like if a horse is struggling to pick his or her foot you know if we can if we can at least avoid words that imply the horse is bad or naughty or um, or or not living up to our expectations and instead empathize and say, I understand this is a struggle, but this is what we need to do. The only caveat that I, I wanted to put on this is I think it's um, one trap that folks fall into, especially the uh, heart-centered, heartfelt horse people, is that um, we often can open ourselves up for becoming doormats for our horses, and that's not okay either. I still have strong sense of boundaries, and I, uh, if I view a horse the same way that I would a human, um, yes, talking about them really honors them so much more. But if I am not holding holding space for expectations about how I should be treated. if we can continue to meet people in conversations uh, where we maybe don't resonate about the way that they're talking about horses. But there was still, you know, had I had another 20 minutes uh, of <laughs> ability to stay in the sauna, I, I might have continued on, you know, with the scowl and, and gone into, um, you know, asked her some more questions because there were some things that we resonated with. I could tell that she was a, a woman who, who really did start with a love of horses just because she could identify how, um, how unhappy the horses were and how, um, not right the what she was asked to do was so there already was a place where we we could connect and if i had more time i think i might have gone into a space where um, i could explain that you know, speaking that the, the way that i'm i'm aiming to work with horses is actually safer for the human, safer for the horse, um, and just just a really, really beautiful thing for everyone who tries it, um, tries to, to follow this model. Um, so anyways, I think 
if we can be a peaceful army of people who go out there and um, share the good word about how to talk about our horses and how to be with our horses and, and not be afraid to engage with people who, who see the world a little bit differently uh, around, around horse treatment. Um, we can plant some seeds, I believe. So, all right, well, I think I've exhausted my thoughts and I've gone over 10 minutes. So thank you so much for watching these Thursday Thought Friday formulations.